Amen. Uh, in the time we have, I want to talk on divine instructions to godly servants. Divine instructions to godly servants. Let us pray. Almighty Father, I thank you because of the word you are given unto us to perfect our lives and relationship with you and with our fellow men. O oh Lord my God, let the severity of the world be made known to your children. Let them in humility bow in acceptance of this world. I thank you for answering. Jesus name we pray thank you the holiness camp is about 1 kilometer from the from the highway i sat by the mango tree in front of my house and a thought came to me this morning that's about maybe 7.30 or so. Suppose you have a master higher than you in the human sense. And he tells you to go to the roadside and buy him some drinks maybe. How will you feel then, of course, in the reply, I will do it because he is a master and I am a servant. Then the voice continued, or the, the meditation continued. As you would be trekking, as you will be trekking from the calm to the roadside, how will you feel in trekking to the roadside? That's the question. A good servant will feel normal because it is duty and that is his duty. His master has instructed him to go to the roadside and buy something for him. What other, does, what other thing will he say than to be going? Because as a servant, he is to please his master. He will go to, to, the, to the roadside to buy for his master what he demanded. Then what if this, the servant on going to the roadside begins to murmur, to complain? Look at this man. He saw me sitting under the mango tree peacefully, enjoying the air, the fresh air. He just, he just told me to go to the roadside. And trekking from here to the roadside is not a small journey. I may trek for 20 minutes to go and buy those things. By, buying those, by the time I finish buying those things to come back, maybe I'll spend one hour. This is a disturbance. What if the, the servant feels that way? then he is not a faithful servant. He is not a good servant because he is murmuring. He's murmuring over what the master has instructed him to do. Now, it therefore means the servant that does it happily does it because of the way he set his mind. 
the servant that doesn't do it happily is not happy because of the way he set his mind. So the whole thing now determines or depends on the servant. How you set your mind. If you set your mind well, you will act joyfully. You will go for that assignment happily. You will rejoice that your master gave you assignment. Your master has other people to, to, have, to have used. But it is you he chose. It is you he chose to send you. Haman, although uh, out of pride in a way, he set his mind high. And rejoice that Esther invited him to the banquet. In all the kingdom of Ahasuerus. In all the palace. Esther has not seen anyone. To invite with the king. To her banquet. But me. What a joy. It is the way he set his mind. So if you set your mind. In the right way, you will be rejoicing at the service you are rendering to your master. But otherwise, you will be angry. You will frown. You will complain. You will mama. From this meditation came the devotion I had with my family today and it is a surprise to them that I am preaching the same message now I had a different message but I got persuaded the devotion you had with the family bring it and let everybody hear it amen so that's why I title it divine instructions to godly servants in Ephesians chapter 5 chapter 6 Verse 5 to verse 9. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 5 to verse 9. The Bible tells us here saying, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Please. Colossians. Chapter 3, I read from verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as mean pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Now, look at this. Several things are being instructed to the servants. However, 
we want to really know who a servant is. A servant is someone that is working under a superior, a master. It can be in the business sense. It can be in the office sense. It can be in the church sense. But you are working under a superior. That is a servant. Who then is a master? A master is he that has subordinates under him. People that are working under him. He is giving them instruction. He is giving them control. He is overseeing them. To ensure they do things well. To please him. According to the vision he has. Now, having understood that, what does the scripture say to these servants? The servant can be a man, the servant can be a woman, whoever it, it, it is. Now, the Bible says to such servants, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh. If you are under somebody, a mistress, a master, what the word is saying is, be obedient to that man. Be obedient to that woman. Here we put children too. You have your mother is your mistress. Your father is your master. So all together, be obedient to your superior. You are working under a superior. Be obedient to your superior. What is obedience? Obedience means carry out the instruction of your superior. Carry out your instruction of your superior. What kinds of instruction? It's instruction to do or not to do. Some instructions come demanding you to do something. Go and do those things. Some instructions come demanding you not to do something. And those instructions are from your master. Don't do those things. Because you are to be obedient to your master. Number two, it says, fear your master. It says, servant, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear. Fear your master. It's like somebody says, Fear the Lord. It does not mean when you see the Lord, you should be running away. Is that what it means? Respect the Lord. Respect the Lord. Fear the Lord means respect the Lord. Fear your master. Respect your master. Whether your master is educated or not educated. Your master is big or small. Your master is rich or poor. Whatever it is, is it your superior? Respect your master. This is what God says. And it goes back again to say, number three, reverence. That tremble in honor for your master or before your master. Tremble. Look at it. Servants, be obedient to them that are your master's. According to the flesh, with fear and trembling. Trembling is that demonstration that comes from your heart of humility. Before a man, you feel unworthy, unworthy to. Ha! Ah, you came to my house, wonderful. Hey, somebody will say, ah, I am kneeling down. Although I'm calling you by phone, but I am on my knees. Talking about high reverence. 
high respect you should have for your master. This is what God is saying. Respect him. Tremble. It's, it's, it, let him be a great man to you. Or a great woman to you. Respect him. Tremble. Again, it continues. It, uh, uh, number four. Serve him with all your heart. It goes here. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart. In singleness of your heart. That talks of with all your heart. With all your heart. That's what it means. The whole heart should be involved in dealing with a leader, a master. Your heart should be involved. Which means you have a prayer point before you. If you don't see your heart being involved, in fear and respect before your leader, your master, start praying on time. Otherwise, there's going to be K-Lake in your relationship. There's going to be disobedience on the way because your heart is not carrying that honor, that respect. There's going to be a problem on the way because your sin shall find you out. That's what the scripture is saying. That state of heart that you're hiding, that heart that is not original, shall show up one day. Cast your bread in water. Ye shall see it after many days. So, let the heart be involved. Pray for your heart. The heart is deceitful. Above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? If your heart does not agree with this thing I'm saying, take it to God in prayer. Wherever you are. Otherwise, I'm also going to come to tell you, husband and wife relationship is also master and servant relationship. If you see your heart not being fully submissive, you are still in pretense. Start praying now. Otherwise, your nature will show to your husband later. Your nature will show. So, the heart should be involved. Serve him with all your heart. Number five, serve him as though you are doing so to the Lord. Back to chapter 6, Ephesians verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Let your service, your relationship, your obedience, your running errands be as you are doing it for Christ. Or you are doing it to Christ rather. Do it as you are doing to Christ. Then suppose. As I was sitting in that mango tree. Jesus now came and said Paul. Go to the roadside. And buy some soft drinks. For me. Hey, Jesus came. And said she will go. And somebody will now. Say, say to me. Hey. Maybe another person who can call me, sir. It is this uh, Jesus that is telling me to go and buy this thing. Another person says, no, give me, let me go and buy. I say, wait. If you know the person who is asking me to go and buy this thing, you will not take away my blessing from me. How will I go? With joy. With happiness. God, Jesus has asked me to go and buy soft drink for him. How was it when Abraham pleaded with God? When he came with two angels on their way to Sodom. 
in human form. I said, please, please, let me just prepare some uh, meat before you so that you can take before you go. Uh, please, please. He said, okay, go and do. Hey, how did he jump? He jumped. Quickly, he ran to Sarah. Take the kid, please. Everybody, do this. Do be fast. We are preparing it for God. Do like that to man. Who is your master? But it is not even telling us that this master is born again. Can you understand that? The man the Lord is promoting before you, he is not saying he is born again. He is not even saying he is his servant, but that you should treat him as you are treating him God. So what is your complaint about some of these masters? Not because they are asking you to do evil on normal thing. Why do you murmur against them? And eh, they're not born again. Come, what does that mean? You won't serve them again? You won't obey them again? So, serve them. Again, number six now. It goes, to, it tells us, do not use eye service. Do not use eye service. Look at it in verse 6. Not with eye service. Something that it is when he is there, you will do it. It is as he is seeing you, you are doing it. If he is not there, bye-bye. Don't do that. Whether he is there or is not there, Go and do it. It's a duty. It's your duty. So, do not use eye service. Again, number seven, do not pretend before him as men pleasers. Do not pretend before him as men pleasers. Look at it, verse six again. Not with eye service as men pleasers. Because, yes, it is when he's there, you're doing it. You're even happy. Uh, uh, Daddy, uh, my master, uh, what do I do? Sir, uh, uh, okay, I have done this, now. what do I do? Uh, okay, what's the next thing? It's just because he's there. Let him not be there. And let's see how you would do that same thing. Don't do that. Remember, this is divine instructions to godly servants. Sinners. We may not do this. We are talking about you. Who say you know God. You fear God. You are serving God. This is what the Lord is saying you should do to your master. In this world we are put under masters. In one place you are a master. In the other side you are a servant. Is that so? They are doing it to you. Do it to others. What men do to you, do to others. Now, you are doing it to others. Some will come and do to you. What therefore you, you will that men should do to you, do ye so to others. That's how we are in this life. We are masters here, we are servants there. So, wherever we find ourselves to be servant, the Lord is telling us how to live. How to behave. Again, number eight, serve him as one serving Christ. In verse six, not with eye service as mean pleasers, but as the servants of Christ. You are the servant of Christ, which means you serve Christ. All you are doing in life is for Jesus. You are bought with a price. You are not servants of men in the carnal sense, but you were bought by Jesus to serve him, and he posted you to that man. So, and told you, serve that man. Whatever you are doing before that man, you are serving Christ. Take it. The security company employs 
security men and trains and trains them and then posts them to various uh, organizations that need security when they serve those organizations whom are they really serving they are serving the security organization because it is they who sent you there so whatever you are doing there you are doing for them if you disobey there, whom would they report to? Whom would they re reject? The company that you don't have good men. We cannot get your company again. We don't need people from you. Your men are stubborn. Your men are not well trained. Be careful. Don't bring reproach to Jesus. He posted you to that man. He posted you to that woman, a mistress. Serve that man, serve that woman as you are serving Christ. Let a good report come that you are doing well there. It is the joy of your master. Remember the parable of the good Samaritan. A man living from Jerusalem to Jericho fell among thieves. Who wounded him and stripped him of all his materials. And when he saw him on the way, this good Samaritan took him, put him on his ass, and became a brother to him, and went to an inn. The man in the hotel, in the inn, did not know that both he and the good Samaritan were seeing this man for the first time that day. But he thought since they were together, he, they were brothers. So he now said, he gave him the money, take care of this person. But I'm continuing my journey. In case this money finishes, use your money and go ahead in my name. When I come, I will pay you. Amen? Then, all that hotel servant is doing to this man, he is doing to who? The man that instructed him. Is the one that gave him the job. All the service. All the thing he is doing. He is doing in his mind. I am doing. Waiting for that man. Who gave me the job. I wouldn't want that man. To come and hear any kind of complaint. From this man that he gave me. If, the man, if this man complains to that man, then the man will blame me and say I'm unfaithful. I'm not a good person. As a result, I will be good to this man. That's what the Lord is saying. Be good to that man. Because it is Jesus that posted you to that man. Be good to that woman. It is Jesus that sent you to that woman to serve. Be good to him. That's what the Bible tells us. Serve him as one serving Christ. Do service to him because God wants you to do so. It is the will of God. Everybody repeat this. Do service to him because God wants you to do so. Now it says in the verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Come, what were you created for? Who created you? Who created you? Who created you? For what? And if God sent you to a man to serve, why are you not serving that man as the purpose where God created you? Because he that created you is he that knows how to use you. And he sends you where you should be used. And you are making noise. You are saying, no, I can't be here. No, I can't serve this man. Then what were you created, created for? That was the will of God. He sent you there. Do it. You say no. Then what are you? Now tell me what you would do for yourself. God will forget you. 
Because you're not ready to do his will. You're not ready to do his will. Even in the government, when they push somebody to a place, and the person goes to that place and says, I won't be there again, many offices don't think about him again. Is that so? He will be wandering from place to place. Nobody bothers about him. Don't do like that to your life. Don't come to the point you are abandoned, wandering from place to place, assuming anything. Such people go to any office and sit there, doing nothing, or getting the work of somebody there to do, not a, an official work. You might be doing other things. People may think you are busy working, but God didn't give it to you. The one he gave you, you have run away from it. Therefore, the Bible says, doing service, doing the will of God from your heart, that is how it is. Yes, do the will of God. Do it with all your heart. Yes, with all your heart. Then, in verse 7, um, uh, the number, um, number what? Number 10. Do it with love, joy, and faithfulness. With goodwill, doing service. With goodwill, doing service. With goodwill, doing service. With good intention. With good spirit. The spirit of the service is the good one. You can do service and somebody is not happy with your service because you're not involved in it. Your face doesn't answer good service. Your face is not agreeing with the service. Please fetch water for me to drink. What are you giving him? Take the water you say I should bring. <laughs> Some people can take and drink. Some will not drink it. So there's no, your mind is not in this thing. I forced you. You were not willing. Please, do the service in a way your master will know you are willing. With good will. In a good spirit, do that service. Do the thing that your husband will know you are willing. With good will, doing service. Amen? Again, do it with good intention as to the Lord. Back to verse 7. With, go with good will, doing service as to the Lord. With good will, doing service as to the Lord. If it were... Now, not, not, not even to talk about the Lord. A senior man. Maybe you respect your pastor. Suppose it was your pastor that came in and demanded water. How could you have served him? All honor with a smile. With all gentleness. Do like that. A story was told of a young man. He visited the house of his elder brother. He came in his... Uh, I don't know whether he went to work or whichever dress. He didn't dress in any serious form. So, when he came into the house, the wife of his elder brother... They didn't bother about him. There were cushion chairs like this there. He said, go and sit on, sit on this seat there. Showed him one seat that is according to his appearance. Well, he sat patiently. He said, this woman doesn't know me. That's why he treated me like this. Okay. Next time he came, and uh, he came decorated. A great man. One of the great men in society. Is it not sure that made the thing? 
shoes and cloth, either suit or this Baban Riga, 1005, 1005, as they call it that time. <laughs> as they call it that time. He was well dressed. When he walked into, hey, Uncle, you're welcome, Uncle, you're welcome. Please sit down. Please. Where? Cushion chair. So please, don't be doing this mean business. With all your heart, do it as unto the Lord. Respect the person as unto the Lord. Then, uh, we continue. Verse, uh, it says, verse number 13. Okay, okay, verse number 12. Do not see your master as mere man you are serving. But the Lord Himself. That's why it says here, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Don't see your master as mere man. The Lord is in him. The Lord sent you to him. Either maybe he's born again already and is a child of God and is a servant of Christ. The Lord sent you there. Serve this man. I love him. He's my servant. He's doing my will. I gave him that assignment to do for me. Go and serve him to make sure, to help him do my will. Or oh, that man, I want to make him born again. That's why I'm sending you to him. Go and do service to him. In the, in, when he sees your service, good man, a Christian man, serving him. I will now speak to him. Can you get a person like that from among the sinners? See what I can change a man. I can do in a man. I can do in a person. He's like that to you because he's a child of God. He's my child. Why don't you come to be my child? By that I will preach to the man and get him converted. So, please, when you go, do service to that man, not as a man, but as Christ. Amen? Then number 13. Know that it is God, not your master, that will reward your good works. Know that it is God, not your master, that will reward your good works. Know that it is God and not your mistress. That will reward your good works. Verse 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Knowing that any good thing, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Listen, some of you. You, really, you have masters that are stingy. They are not generous. They don't give. Don't be discouraged because this man doesn't give any, in fact, even to give food to eat. I've been driving this man. When he buys a uh, buys thing to eat on the way, he doesn't think about me. The Lord will reward you. Be faithful to him. He is not your rewarder. Your salary comes from heaven. The Lord will reward you. But some people are kind. Some masters are kind. Good. They have a good heart. They have a good spirit. When you do service for them, they will give you. Like the man that sat under the mango tree. That the master says, go and buy drinks for me. Buy three, three, three bottles. Soft drink. He goes and buys the three bottles. And when he brought them to the master, the master says, take one. Say, eh? This man is a good man. No? <laughs> you who are masters, be good. Amen? So, so there are good masters like that, but not everyone. Some will take the three and go and finish drinking them and bring the empty bottles and say, go back and give them. Go back and give them. You are still trekking the same distance. 
Is this? But whichever be careful, be, you know surely the Lord whom you are doing this good service for shall reward you. For God is a rewarder. Amen. God rewards all men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. God rewards everybody. He rewards both masters and servants. He rewards all people. He is called a rewarder. The Bible says, if God does not reward you, then God is not right. God is not right. God will count himself unrighteous if he does not reward you. For this good service you are rendering in his name. That's sure. So don't fear. Don't bother. Sure. The reward is going to come to you. From God. Yes. Don't do evil against your master. To avoid God's judgment. You want to avoid God's judgment? Don't do evil against your master. Colossians chapter 3 verse 25. Colossians chapter 3 verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done. And there's no respect of persons. But he that doeth wrong shall receive of that which he has done. Privately, you are doing wrong to your master, you will receive judgment. That's why some people remain servants and they don't become masters. They were not faithful. And God that promotes does not promote them. That's why some people even graduate. They say they graduate from their masters and go to do their own, establish their own. No reward, no blessing. You didn't serve your master well. The Bible says, He that is unfaithful in that which is another man's, who will give him that which is his own? He that is unfaithful in that which is another man's, who will give you that, him that which is his own? If, if you are unfaithful, in that which is another man. She says, ah, it's not my own. I, I, do I put all my strength? You will never have your own from God. So, be careful. Be faithful. Now, having seen this, I want to ask a question. You have now known what a servant should do to his master. The question now is, is God your master? Is God your master? Is God your master? God is asking you this question. Because do you do these things to God? In Malachi chapter 1. Malachi. Chapter 1. The Bible tells us in verse 6, Malachi chapter 1, verse 6, a son honored his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? said the Lord of hosts unto you. O priests that despise my name. And yes, wherein have we despised thy name? There are two things here that he had done to a master. One, a servant honors his master. Two, a servant fears, reverence, Reverences his master. 
if I am your master, where is the honor you give me in your life? If I am your master, tell me your fear. See the way you come to worship me. Even see the way you dress when you are coming to worship me. See the way you sit when you are in my presence. Is there honor? Is there honor? See your attitude. It is when everybody is seated down that you are coming in. Is there respect? Does that show you respect me? See the things you do. See how you feel higher than everybody. In my presence. Do you regard me? You want to carry attention away from me, even to yourself. Are you my servant? Am I really your master? That you want to give all honor to? See it, the Lord. Unto the priest that despise my name. You despise my name. When they say, this is the thing of God. Nothing. When they say, ah, you are in the house of God. See your attitude. Do you bother? When as walking up and down and doing service, even in the camp where God is, does that mean anything to you? Does, um, does the property of God have any impression on you? Ah, this is the property of God. I have to deal well. Do you? Where is the fear? Servants to give to their masters. And I am the master of all masters. If servants give ordinary people, human beings, according to the flesh, honor, how much should be mine? But where is it from you? No. I'm not your master. You are of your master, the devil. That's why you serve him. It is sin that is interesting you. It is evil that is interesting you. Right even in the house of God, you will be doing evil. Right in the house of God, is evil you are doing. That you are interested in doing. That you are cheating. You are cheating. One of our brothers here was telling us that he went to buy something. We gave him money to go and buy something. And then he priced it 1,000 naira lower than the price, the general price in the market. So he felt that by his bargaining power, he can use this 1,000. Jesus came to him and said, you too? So you are doing this thing against me? So you have joined others to do this thing too? Try that money and you will see. Return my money. Return my money. See the character you behave. See what you do to the name of the Lord. See how you despise the service of the Lord. See how you do not mind about the flock, the assignments God gave you to do. You see your master, whom you should start with. Fear and trembling. Even when you commit sin, you don't bother. You go ahead to serve, to do the service of God and be singing. Hey, let everybody clap your hands. Jesus is coming. Are you not mocking me? Do you see the holiness of my name in the service? What impression are you giving others? You are not my servant. I know my servant. My servants honor me. My servants respect me with fear and trembling. But you don't because you are not my servant. I know my sheep and my sheep know my own voice. I speak and they hear me. I call and they come. They are the ones I'm going to preserve and keep them to the end. But you, check your life. Are you a servant? So that's what God is saying again. In the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46. Luke, chapter 6, verse 46. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, 
and do not the things which I say. Your mouth can call easily. Lord, Lord, Lord. You sing it in song. Lord, Lord, Lord. You shout it in prayer. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. But the things I say, you're not doing them. Then why are you calling me Lord, Lord, Lord? Why are you saying master, master, master? Do you know who a master is? Do you know who a Lord is? It's one that commands your life. It's one that rules your life. It's one that oversees your life. It's one that instructs you on what to do and, not, and what not to do. But you're not obeying. And you're still calling me master. What for? No, I'm not your lord. No, I'm not your master. No, you're not my servant. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 23. Not everyone that said unto me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will, will I profess and say, I will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. No respect for God. Even in the house of God, you are carrying women to go and sleep with them. Ma even in the office, they are carrying you. Office of Christ! They are carrying you to go and sleep with you. You are coming to say, your Lord, Lord, am I not singing in your name? Don't I go for evangelism in your name? I never knew you. Get out from this place. Workers of iniquity. You don't know you. You are not among my children. You are not among my servants. You're not. That's what God is saying. You're not. I'm not your master. Go and meet your master. When there was trouble in the sea, they woke up uh, Jonah and said, everybody's crying to his God. You cry to your God. You go and meet your God. The man that you have been respecting that makes you to do that evil. It's not God. It's your own God but not the Almighty. Go and meet him. Everybody should cry to his God for salvation, for blessing, for deliverance, for protection. Why are you calling the person who, you don't, who doesn't know you? You're not obeying him. When did you obey God in your life? You're asking him to come and help you. Does he know you? Do you obey him? That's the word. Again, in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 13 to 16. John. Chapter 13, verse 13 to 16. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye do, ye say well, for so I am. Ye call me Master and Lord, ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. That ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Ye call me master and Lord. That's correct. I'm really master. I'm really Lord. I am supreme. The commander in chief of creation. That is me. Now, I humbled myself. Did you see my humility? Go and learn it. Go and do like that. You saw how I humbled to wash the feet of, even your feet too. I wash your feet, humble before your brethren and serve them. 
That is how I am. I am your master. I've shown you an example. Humility. And service. Love to serve. For I am among you as he that served. Love to serve your brethren. That is when your, your, your masterhood shall be respected. Love to be humble before your brethren. I've given you an example. Learn from it. Again in the book of Matthew. Matthew. That's what the Lord is telling you. He's teaching you this in chapter 10. Verse 24 to 25. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 24 to 25. The Bible tells us here, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord, if they have called the master of the house. Beelzebub. How much more shall they call them of his household? If they have given me various names. Why? But, and I did it. I took it without pursuing people. Without seeking how to destroy them. How to punish them. How to do. Why are you always irritated because they call you a bad name? Because they say you have a devil. You didn't hear that they, they call me so too? You didn't hear that? I had the chief of devils in me called Beelzebub. You didn't hear? So why are you getting trouble? Why are you getting trouble? Why? They call you those names. I love forget those things and move forward. And do the will of your father who has sent you. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That is all you should do. In John chapter 15. John. Chapter 15. I read. Verse 20. Remember the word that I have said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me. They will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. Yes, some will keep. They kept my saying. They will keep your saying. Go ahead and be saying it. But they pass, some persecuted me. Be ready also to face persecution. Are you not my servant? And I am given to suffering? I'll, don't trouble yourself when suffering comes your way. Don't trouble yourself. When they speak evil against you, be strong, move forward, and do the will of your father. Do the will of your master. Now, masters after the flesh. After we have deal with supreme master. Let's come back to human master in various areas aspects of life. We have talked it all over, but let's talk about this one again. I said in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. The Bible tells us in verse 9. Verse 9 to verse 10. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering back, or rather not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Amen. Exhort servants. What? To be obedient unto their own masters. Own masters. Everybody say, own masters. 
Say it again. On masters. Again, on masters. Thank you. If you go to the market, you see the shops, different shops. Every shop has a master and a boy servant. A master and a boy servant. Or a mistress and a maid. Every shop. And they're selling different, different things. Amen? It's like the Lord came to be speaking to those people. You know you don't have the same masters. Obey your own masters. Your own master. This other master, don't allow him to come and be asking you to do something. You say, uh, he's a master too, but he's not your own. He's a master actually, but he is not your own. Is he your own master? No. So, at your own master. It means don't go and be given subordination to another person. The subordination you would have given to the right person, you are going to give to another. Don't do that. Some wives do that. The respect they are not given to their husbands. They are given to other people's husbands. That's what they do. You see another man coming. You go and kneel down. The man is sitting and says, Is that my wife? Hey, Wonderful. I've never seen her on her knees in the house. And is giving this honor to another man. Good. To honor people generally. Honor the king. But there are some subordinations. You give to your own master. Don't go and release your body to the frame of your husband. Don't do that. It's not your husband. However close they are, he is not your husband. He has his own wife. Don't. Because some of these friends are, are immoral in their nature, in their thought, and they will want to just command respect. And you begin to suffer. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's go to the bedroom. We're just going. Eh? Is he your husband? I say, is he your husband? There are areas that is only your own husband. Only your own husband can see your nakedness. Don't go and open your nakedness to another person. That's it. Subordination. There, there is respect that should be given. But there are different categories of masters. Everybody look to your master. It doesn't mean you'll be abusing other masters. No. Give them the respect due unto them. The service due unto them as is general. But when it comes to, uh, go and bring the money you sold today. Only my master can demand that money. Is that not so? Only my master. I can't come and carry my master's money and come and give you. Except there is clear evidence that my master told you. And then my master will tell me that I should give you the money. My master will tell me. Then I am doing so because my master told me. But this is not the one that applies between husband and wife. No. Your own master. So, exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things. Live to the pleasing of your master. What can you do to make your master happy? Ah, be thinking it. One, if you carry out your master's instruction, your master will be happy. Carry out his instruction to please him well. Two, sit down and think. What do I do to make my master happy with me? Yes, I saw his clothes dirty. Let me carry the clothes and go and wash them. 
preach them and bring to my master. I, he will be very happy. He's going to be very happy. Yes. What other thing do I do? Be thinking how to please your master in the work here. What work do I do so that when my master comes to see, he will be happy. I did this. I did this. I did this. You gave me five talents. I traded with the five talents. I got another five talents. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You gave me three talents. I traded with it. I got three more talents. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But there's one faithless servant. You gave me a talent. I was afraid I went and buried it. Carry him outer darkness be thinking what to do to please your master so it goes exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things not answering again everybody say it not answering again say it say it Say it the last time. There are some servants that are bold in the heart. Rough in their life. When their master speaks, they are also speaking. Why did you not clean this place? Look at all this place clean. Uh, 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 your, your eyes are not seeing. You don't see how this place is clean. You are talking to me like that. But you talk to me like that too now. There are servants like that. <laughs> I'm telling you. Eh! Can anybody passing by know that a servant and a master is talking, are talking? What would they say? <laughs> Two masters are, are talking. They came across that way. That's how some servants are. The Bible says, don't answer your master. When your master is angry and is rebuking you, keep quiet. Don't answer again. Don't. Don't. But I am not guilty. Keep quiet. You are not guilty. He has been given right to rebuke you. Since he is exercising that right, keep quiet. If you are not guilty, you will answer another time. You will explain another time. But not at the time he's talking, you're talking. He's talking, you're talking. Then who is behind who? Who is below who? Who is controlling who? A father is talking to a child. The child is answering back. Did he ask you a question? Did he ask you a question? Wake up from sleep. Where are you lying down there? All this while. I am not sleeping. I say, stand up. I say, I say, I'm not sleeping. Why are you talking like that? To your father? Even if you are not sleeping, why not wake up quietly? You are not sleeping. God knows that you are not sleeping. Just wake up. Just stand up. Say nothing. Say nothing. It shows reverence respect for your father not answering again don't answer back but some are tough strong hearted you talk the talk you talk the talk you are sinning eh? but I, God knows I didn't do it God knows you are stubborn God knows you are stubborn hearted otherwise you'll be peaceful. If arm robbers can say, come here, and you'll come. Show me what is your hand. you show. Bring it here. What do you do? <laughs> Why didn't you answer arm robber? Myself. If the money is my own. How will you be asking me to bring my money? I cannot do that. I, what will happen to you? That, will you reach home safely? Because you fear your life, that armed robbers command, lie down, 
you just lie down. Whether you're wearing white like myself, you won't say, you know the cloth I am wearing. <laughs> you will not say so. You are doing this thing for your life. That it may not turn to this man getting angry and shoot you dead. What about for your heavenly life? That you cannot control yourself. You're answering. I have right. Why didn't you have right before, Ambroba? Why didn't you have right there? For God's sake, for righteousness' sake, and for the fact that you are a servant, and he is your master, be quiet. There is a master of master. God, who shall reveal your righteousness in the due time? And this man shall come and say, Oh, this child was not really sleeping. Maybe he went out and somebody said, Who poured this water here? Ah, it's this child that came and poured the water. When? This morning, just about 10 minutes ago. Eh, come. I'm sorry. Eh? You know, you were not sleeping. I've heard that you were the one who poured that water out there. You are not sleeping. Tomorrow when you speak, he will believe you. Why not allow God to justify you? Why is your tongue justifying you? That's wrong. Not speaking again. Not answering again. Again, in verse 10, not purloining. Purloining is stealing little by little from your master. Money in the pocket. How much is the money? 10,000. You pick two. That's purloining. Um, what is this? What is lying down here? This one is lying. Oh, it is his uh, t shirts. How many are the t shirts? There are 15. You pick four. That's purloining. You're selling for your master. He says, This thing, sell it for 20,000. You priced with somebody and he bought it 30,000. You carry the 10,000. It's your own. How is it your own? My ability to price. Who to price? For, go and stand on the roadside and do ability there. Price on the roadside with nothing. Will you get 10,000? Is it over your master's property? You're making false gain? Deal faithfully. That's why it says here, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity. Fidelity means faithfulness. Showing all good faithfulness. Master, you know, you told me I should sell it for 20,000. You know, I was able to sell it for 10, I mean, for 30. Here is the whole 30. That's faithfulness. That's what God expects of you. Be faithful. Yes. Not by them, not showing, but showing all good fidelity. That they may adorn the, God, the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. That you may at beautify. Beautify this faith of our Lord Jesus. That's why this restitution, when you go for restitution, the people are surprised. You mean the people like this are still in the world? You are beautifying the gospel of Christ. When you behave fine, you are beautifying the gospel of Christ. You are giving honor to Jesus Christ. That's what God expects you to do. You are giving honor to Jesus Christ. Now, finally, husband and wife in master-servant relationship. I've talked about the supreme master. Now, the human master. Apply the form, same formula to them. Then, your husband. Your husband. In 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their 
own husbands. Remember when I say own master, own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amassment. Can you see that? The husband and wife in master-servant relationship. How is it? Sarah called Abraham. Who? Lord. Master. Master. And the Bible directs the women to Sarah. Learn from Sarah. She called her husband master. Woman, let your husband be your master. On master. Then, if he is a master, you are a servant. Your relationship with him is master servant relationship. Now, let's go. Here, the Bible says. Verse 5. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Although adorned themselves talks about godly dressing. Such dressing that other people cannot come and snatch you out. Because Flamboyant dressing forms pride into you. And when pride comes into you, you are superior to your husband. Then when you are superior to your husband, other people will pick you. That is it. That great dressing, high dressing, you are making an announcement of yourself. This man here is not enough. You are making an announcement. Others will be interested. Godly attire, moderate dressing, makes you subject to your husband. You are, instead of raising your mind on look ahead, no. You look within. Look on your master. Your master is by you. Why are you dressing for people outside? No. Dress decent, clean, but for your master. At home, your husband. Now, what should women do? Be in subjection to your own husbands. Be in subjection to your own husband. That's what the word is saying. Subjection. Subjection. Subjection shows there is a power that controls you. And that power comes from your husband. There is a power that controls you. You are bound to a place where you are kept. You are bound to a, a behavior that is expected of you. Be subject. Submit. Subjection. Subjection. It's as if somebody goes out in a warfare and captured you and brought you and keep you with himself. You are there. Subjection. Yes. Subjection. Yes. A hunter goes to hunting and picks an animal and comes and puts it around him and is controlling him. Like our, one of our brothers brought a monkey to this camp and the monkey is in subjection to him. Is that okay? He gives the monkey food he eats. The monkey's life is under control to that person. 
But if I say this too much, it will be as if it's mechanical. It will be as if it is carnal. No. It's not mechanical and carnal. Subjection. Because you are a free moral agent. These things, do them willingly of your own. Not by force. Willingly submit your life to that man. Let it not be forced. Else it's carnal. Then the pleasure of it will not be there. If it is by force, there's no pleasure. There's no joy. Let your heart decide, I will obey this man. I will listen to this man. I will do the will of this man. I will carry the beatings of this man. Just make it up your mind. And then you will find yourself living in the sphere the man desires. That's it. So, women, be subject to your husband. Again, obey your husband. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, obey your husband. Obedience, what is obedience? Obedience is carrying out instruction of your husband in two respects, in things to do and in things not to do. Again, let this thing not be mechanical. Let it be of your free will. Inform yourself you will do it. God does not force us to obey him. He doesn't. He wants us to do it willingly. So do it willingly. Happily. Joyfully. Of your own pleasure. Don't demand force before you do a thing. Just inform your heart. This is what my husband wants. I will do it. But it will require practice. You will have to practice this over and over. Because you are human. You cannot do things automatically without practice. You must make the practice. What is this thing that he said he doesn't want? Practice how not to do it. Practice. 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 If you fail... Tell him to be patient because you can fail. You will practice and arrive at it. What is this thing that he says you should do? Practice. He wants some kind of soup, some food that you are not used to it. It's not even customary to you. Practice it. Learn from others. Try. Because the heart is to please this man in all things. I want to please him. So be practicing. Be learning it. If he th you fail, be patient with me. I will soon arrive there. That's how God wants it of you. That's how God wants it of you. And for righteous women. Righteous women is not that you should sin because your husband says so to please him. No, there is a master in heaven. You are doing what you are doing to your husband because of God. Therefore, he ca you cannot do anything for your husband that God would, disapp would, would disapprove. You cannot. Remember that security officer that is sent to an organization by his security company. He is working for that organization. But the, the security company that employed him has rule guiding their own staff, what their staff should do, what their staff should not do. So, he must not do anything in that organization that his security company is against. Is that true? Because I'm subject to a security company that employed me and sent me to your organization as a security man. Your organization cannot command me to do a thing that will make me at variance with the security company, they will sack me from this job. And I know you will not employ me. They will sack me. So, if that organization instructs that security man to do a thing 
that is contrary, he will not do. If your husband, whom you are doing these things to for Christ's sake, whom you are serving for Christ's sake, whom you are humbling to for Christ's sake, will be asking a thing that is contrary to you, the master in heaven, he will not do it. Let him not say stubbornness. If he says stubbornness, then he also is stubborn to the Almighty for demanding a thing contrary to the Almighty. Show him that what he's demanding is contrary to the Almighty. That is it. Get it again. It says, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, wives recognize the lordship of your husband. Recognize the masterhood of your husband. Recognize the headship of your husband. If you don't recognize this, obedience will be difficult. Obedience will be difficult. If you bring two soldiers together, one comes from one, uh, one state, another comes from another state. And they come in mufti to your house. Obedience will be difficult because they don't know who is senior. But once this one realizes that ah, I am corporal, this is a captain. You will, wonder, you will see wonderful obedience from this corporal to the captain. But when he didn't know, they were bought in Mufti. Who is captain? Who is uh, uh, corporal? It's not written in the face. If you don't recognize your husband, that this man, God has set him above you, serving him will be difficult. Obeying him will be difficult reverencing him will be difficult because you have not recognized that. You are colleagues. We are together. We are, we are masters together. You have not recognized that. And again, he says, with the singleness of your heart, with your whole heart, not, uh, not as mean pleasers, but serving him with all your heart. Wives, if your heart is obstinate and does not regard your husband, go and be praying, pleading with God to bring your heart to Bible state. Otherwise, trouble will be in that home. All this oppression, suppression they are doing, you're just suppressing. Ah, you're suppressing. It will burst out one time. And the man will know he has a terrible wife at home. Go and pray. God should come to that heart and conform that heart to scripture. Plead with him. Let him remove stubbornness from your heart. This lack of respect is from the heart. Whatever you are saying in the mouth will not last. Circumstance will come. You will speak out who you are. You will speak out what is in your heart. Therefore remove it from within the heart. A man speak it. Out of their abundance of the heart. Those negative, negative, negative thoughts that are in your heart, you will speak them out one day. If you don't want to embarrass your husband, embarrass yourself, and make your husband to regret because of you, pray for your heart. Go to God in prayer. Pray until, be fast, so that he doesn't recognize it. Be fast. God give me no. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, 
calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. God does not refer you to Mary, the mother of Jesus, that you should copy her home character. The Bible didn't present her home character. The Bible didn't present her marriage character. Because whatever, the Bible is interesting. It was a righteous woman. Righteous woman gave birth to Jesus. Not much was said about Mary and Joseph. We didn't hear about Joseph again. But about Sarah and Abraham, we heard about them. The Bible presented Sarah and Abraham. Sarah and Abraham. Sarah and Abraham. So go and learn from Sarah. Go and learn from Sarah. And it concludes by saying, Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amassment. If you do well, there's no reason to be afraid in your marriage. Why are you fearing your husband as if he's uh, it's because you're not doing well? It's because you're not doing well. That is why you're living in fear in that house. Go and do well. You will receive praise. You will receive blessing from your husband. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank the Lord. Divine instruction. Divine instructions to godly servants. Listen to this over and over again. And behave well in your workplace. Behave well everywhere. Behave well in the church. Behave well in your marriage. God put you in servanthood. Serve to the joy of your master. Serve that God might receive praise. Lord. I want to be like Jesus in my life. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. Lord. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. Lord. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Lay hand upon yourself. I'm praying for you. Divine Father, your word has come to us to change us. Your word has come to us to beautify us in godliness as your children have heart so they will be Amen. may the word cleanse them Amen. may the word correct them Amen. may the word perfect them Amen. that you will receive praise Amen. from those that see us from those that relate with us oh lord make these wives fear their husbands make them respect their husbands make them reverence their husbands in jesus name what about these people who serve you who have no respect of your house respect of your name the fear is not in them they commit sin right in the house of god divine father may they repent in dust and ashes may their bones be broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Servants who are serving their masters. After the flesh. Human masters. 
may they be faithful to their masters. Amen. All this desire of gain and, and shrewdness, palloining, cheating, unfaithfulness, may they repent out of it. May they repent of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Do it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3906. Or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Savior. Jesus, I believe. 